Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to a brand new video. I hope you're doing fantastic, man. Today, guess who got married, bro? How to Beast, Mr. How to Beast, man. So David from Mr. His name is David from How to Beast. He got married, man. So I've been watching this guy for a while, man, and I really like his content. So let's watch. Let's have a look. You already see why I like his content, bro. Look at look at look at the editing. That's nice, man. She is serious, man. He's getting married, dude. I thought it was clickbait. He's <laughs> got, <laughs> got his brothers and stuff like that. All those guys, uh, Patrick, those guys that helped him um, with game and stuff. All they talk about on his channel is how to pick up girls and get better with your life and stuff like that. So self-improvement. Why are you getting married, man? I mean, God damn, I mean... <laughs> You must really love her, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's the Dave. The homie Dave. I saw the girls. In Spain, too. Spain is in Europe, right? That's not in America. So this guy actually flew to Europe, right? Because Spain is not in America. It's in Europe, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's in Europe. Wow. Oh shit! He's actually getting married, bro. Look, he's in a church, everything. Wow. Wait, is that the father, bro? Ah! <laughs> Fuck that, man. You gotta ask him if we can take his daughter, man. <laughs> hey, that's David right here, man. Out of beast. Where's this bold guy, man? Nah, bro. Why is it? Look. I understand, like, they got experience, but why is it gotta be old, bold man, man? That's pedophilic. Why, don't, why can't they just have, like, young men, like, playing those instruments? You know, like, there's young Asians which can play, you know what I'm saying? God damn, look at everyone looking at him, bro. Shit. Wait, is that bitch actually taller than him? Nah, bro, that's embarrassing. Or maybe she's just wearing high heels. I don't know, man. But if the bitch is taller than you, man, that's madness. Look, she is, bro. She's always taller than him, bro. I think that's David's mother and father. <laughs> this guy's like having fun, man. It looks lit as fuck. Hey, that's the editor, bro. This is a young Asian guy. That's his, like, his uh, camera guy. His new camera guy. It helps him uh, film and stuff like that. Dude, imagine if you spill wine when you're wearing more wine, man. That would be embarrassing, dude. God dang. Chinatown fan. What is going on, bro? Welcome, Welcome to the video. To the video. I have a wife now. Oh my god! Your wife, man, I'm not gonna lie, man. She's actually not that good looking. I don't know, but they say don't judge a book by its cover, right? You know? Anyway, you don't want a girl that's gonna. You want a girl that's gonna stimulate your mind, man. It's not about looks anyway, right? A wife! A wifey! Which means you could also say, gains, bro. Work out. No, it's actually not gains, it's losing, man, because a marriage or relationship actually like brings, slows you down, my guy, so it's not gains, it's losses, bruh. I said, hell. Wedding complete. <laughs> marriage. Now marriage complete. That would be the marriage be complete, right? Wedding complete. Now we can get married. Now you can have kids, bro. She only married you because she wants your kids. Two days ago. It's kind of crazy to think. It's so crazy. It's still, like, so unreal. I hope you all enjoyed that intro. It was a little emotional. Uh, we didn't film at the wedding like we, we hired a videographer photographer but that video is not gonna be ready for some time um so i did have kevin mock the old videographer the goat 
as well as Max Tunin. They helped from a couple shots here and there. Yeah, we really both wanted to be very present on that day. I don't think I even knew where my phone was, like, at all. It was just really awesome to just be unplugged from any everything. Yeah, man, that's my life every day, my guy. I'm unplugged. I wake up, I go to nature, my guy, and I, like, check my phone. That's the last thing, you know. It's really good to be in the moment, guys, to be more in the present moment. So I agree with this bitch. Just be super focused on the wedding. Yeah, it's funny because I never, like, it's not something I looked forward to or romanticized that much. Like, for me, the, des- the decision to marry you was all about, like, the marriage and the rest of our life together, not one day or 24, not even 24 hours. It ended up being, like, 10 hours total. The point I'm trying to make is, like, I didn't build it up to be this crazy thing in my head, but now looking back on it, I think I can confidently say it was it was the best night of my life, and not just because of, like, the matrimony and the act of, of, of being married, but all of my closest friends and family from around the world were in Sevilla, Spain, together with me having an amazing time celebrating like us the venues that we chose were absolutely amazing the food the music the dancing it just all came together so perfectly it was like out of a movie everyone kept saying that they were like i feel like i'm in a movie now we're gonna kick back i win in a movie i ain't drinking wine answer the top 10 questions that y'all sent to me on instagram about the wedding first a lot of people have been asking to see the ring and the wedding band so julia it's beautiful like I hope, my God, I hope that's real diamonds, not just fake diamonds. You know what I'm saying? I hope you really put some, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go ahead, show. Ah. And now that y'all seen that, I do have to give a huge thank you to James Allen for being the sponsor of today's video. So check it out. JamesAllen.com is this website that sells diamonds and engagement rings. Dude, I don't want to watch your function. So I can understand exactly the differences between one diamond and another. And that's what finally gave me the confidence to choose. Yeah, one. yeah, whatever, man. I'm skipping ads. Bro, there's not meant to be ads on this, like, bro. It's, just, it's the spot that's going to allow you to do that with confidence. Anyway, I'll drop the link, first link in description so you can take a look at God this. God damn, God, I don't give a fuck about it. It's fucking advertising. It I want to hear about your wedding. Video going. All right, now, this, this chair is so squeaky. Let, let's get into these questions. <laughs> When did you realize you wanted to marry her? What green flags were there for you to take this decision? I uh, Personally, I don't think you should have married my guy. You're still young. You're 31, as I understand. You're in your prime. And um, she's just trying to lock you down or slow you down. That's my opinion. In Spanish. She said, take the decision. That's, like, uh, that's how you say it in Spanish. So I'm a very logical person. And I knew I would wait three years of dating someone before even thinking about that decision. So that's what I did. And after three years, when I thought about it, I was pretty confident that Julia is someone I would spend uh, the rest of my life with. Personally, man, I would have like around five to ten different women. If if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get married, I'll marry around five to ten different women. Like that. That's just how I feel. I don't know about you. So like, I, I I just can't. I'm just not comfortable with one man. Green flags, I would say, was that first of all, like I think physical attraction. You know, other things are important, but the fact that that did not die, but it actually increased after three years. That's rare, and it's even increased through through six years now. Second, it was a logical decision, not an emotional decision of, oh my God, I just want to have a wife, and I love you, and I want to marry you. Not that those things aren't true, but like, <laughs> it's it's more than that. Uh, Jul- Julia's going to be an amazing mother to, to our children. She's a very nurturing side to her. We both, uh, our, our values and what we want to do in life align. Like, we've been I'm not going to lie, man. If I was to write her on a scale of one to ten, just on her looks... She's a four to me, just on the looks, my guy. I don't know, but if I was to everything, the whole package, I'll probably be a six out of ten. For me personally, my guy, and if I was to rate you, you're probably like a nine out of ten. So it's look like you're downgrading, my guy. I'm just being real. You can do. I reckon you can do a lot better, man. I'm just, I'm just being honest. But hey, what do I know, right? It's always had that that adventurous side. It just makes sense. And we've been able to push each other to grow so much over these six years. And three, I'm just going to do my top three. I fucking love it, bro. Why did you choose a destination wedding? So it's kind of- That's the number one rule you never do. You never tell her you love her. Otherwise, she'll get bored. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I'm coming up. I used to be in the red pill, but now I'm out of that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being real, man. You know, And um, I noticed that if you tell a girl every day that you love her, you love her. She'll end up getting bored and she was like, I got this guy by his neck, you know what I'm saying? But whereas if you keep her guessing, like, she's like, does he love me or not? You know, you keep saying, like, 
like freaking what do you call it like curious whether or not you love it how you feel you know that's how you that's the frame that i like to keep i like to keep them curious because that makes them stray stay attracted for you for longer but let's have a listen funny actually when i thought david was gonna propose to me we went on a big trip to spain and so i was like oh he's definitely gonna propose because it was kind of like the beginning of our relationship kind of started in spain but he didn't end up proposing in spain and then well, once- our relationship started in boston but after it was like a casual relationship for six months, we met up again in Spain, and that's when it, we, we took it to, to the next step. Yes, yes. Nice. Uh, and so I think for for us, it was kind of like this special place, and obviously his family's there, and the idea of getting married in Spain both really made sense to us, and then when we found the venue, we fell in love with it, and we were like, let's do this. Like, this is amazing. Why not? What changes for you and Julia now? Well, on a day-to-day basis, I don't think much... That means you can't fuck any other bitches, my guy. You're tied down to one bitch, my guy. Simple. Will change. I mean, I think maybe there's like a a fundamental feeling of like this is for the rest of our life now, and I'm I'm down with that. It, I, it's funny we were sitting on the couch. You're down with that, my guy. What? I'm not down with that. Maybe I am for now for the first two few years, but you're gonna get bored, man. I'm just being real. The next five years, man. You're gonna see. I I pro. Look, I'm not trying to be negative, man, but I promise he's gonna upload a video saying I'm gonna go divorced. Maybe next, not in the next five years. Maybe in the next decade or so. Because I don't know, my guy. I, was like, I think all that's changed uh, is that he calls me wifey and I call him jefe, and jefe is a Spanish word for like chief or like yuck. Boss. Um, but other than that, like it feels the exact same. I don't know. I, I have a wife now. <laughs> jefe. This is going to be a real tough one. What were the three moments that stood out to you most at your wedding? Why? I have so many, but the first one was... You may now kiss the bride. That's always the biggest one. I bet you they're going to say that. I walked down the aisle and I made eye contact with David. We stood up there and I was like, yep, I'm going to marry the love of my life right now. I'm going to say the same one. That's the first one that comes to mind. The <laughs> moment I saw Julia enter the church, it was an extremely emotional moment where it finally... <laughs> <laughs> she was so beautiful in her dress. She was coming down the aisle with her dog, her dog, her dad, not our I dog, wish. Her, her dad Jim. It was, it was special. Number two was the venue. It, everything that I've been planning for a super long time all came together. It was absolutely stunning. Everyone was so blown away. I was blown away. Just how many genuine moments I shared with people I love. Spanish family, American family, Julie. God damn, man. Seeing all these niggas drinking like this makes me want to go out right now and get some liquor. You know what I'm saying? Some coffee liquor, man. His family, my closest friends, we were sober, we were hammered. I just, I think I laughed with everybody. And I know maybe it's a cop-out answer because it's not a specific moment, but it was just it was fucking emotional and amazing. Obviously, that's how I felt. All these people came to, to support us and be there for us. It was amazing, but... Number three is one I'm not even gonna... This is the same for us. My cousins, Josh and Matt. Well, okay, y'all probably remember listening to this song back in 2019. It was like top charts. Big hit of the summertime. Yeah. A lot of y'all probably heard this. We're gonna party like it's a weekend. It's only Monday, but never catch a feeling. It's a holy day, then we back in the bakery. And I'm still a beast with these gangs. Can't play how to see. God damn, my guy, why you gotta put so much fucking auto tune in your voice? Well, my cousins, Matt and Josh, who were part of that song along with the homie Dave, they gave a speech together. And at the oh end of the speech, speech is perfect. I don't think anyone saw this coming. If you don't want to hear this, you know, fast forward a minute and a half, but this might have been the greatest moment of the whole night. You don't want to miss it. We're gonna party. Nah, bro, what the fuck? That would rather sound cringe as fuck, man. If I nigga sound like that at my wedding, man, I'll just kick him out. I'll get the security and get the fuck out of here. Now I 
Okay, I realize. Why is there no niggas here, my guy? You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't mean to be racist, but why doesn't have any niggas there? Because niggas get entertained. This guy's got entertained for shit. That's why I got me. <laughs> yeah, no YouTube prank, eh? We'll see about that in a, good, in a decade or a half. Honestly, when they did this, uh, my Spanish family who don't know them, I think they were they were so confused <laughs> and blown away, and like Matt and jo Matt rapped well. Josh is such an amazing singer, and it was so off the cuff. I didn't know it was coming. I was laughing and crying, and this is after they roasted me for like eight minutes of during their speech as well. They made. Such a special day. They like took it to a whole different level. How many people came? Okay. Oh, it was amazing. We had about 120 people. And, and you didn't have a single black person there, my Perfect, girl. the perfect size. During the time you were leveling up, did you always think you were going to get married? No, I mean, I always thought, or it's always been important to me. I don't know. Maybe there's not a, black, a lot of black people in Spain. I don't know. I've never been there. To have a family of my own. And for me, marriage is part of that. But it's never something that was like a focus of mine. You know, y'all know I'm big on even if you're single, just look at each each date you go on as like a casual lookup and, and let it prove you wrong that it's more than that. Because that's what happened with me and Julie. We tried to ignore it for six months. All the best relationships I know, they've all started, not all of them, but most of them have started similarly, where both of them didn't really want a relationship. They tried to, to ignore it and, and not to have it be a relationship. That's true, man. That's what happened to me with my ex-girlfriend, my guy, you know. We just thought I was casual and then... You just, you know what I'm saying? I agree with that 100%. But, but there were so many things going for it that it turned into a relationship. Yes, sir. What most people make is they romanticize the, the person that they've been on three or four dates with, they've been hanging out with for a week or two months, and then they make it into something that seems right, even though maybe it's not. And we've been together for six years, so. Before marriage. Before marriage. Do you also wear a ring? Wow, that's half so, a decade. I mean, at the wedding, she, she put a ring on my finger. I am wearing it for this video, of course. But typically, I'm not going to wear this. I don't really like jewelry. If I'm lifting weights, it's not practical. So most of the time, I, I won't wear it. But for special occasions, or we're going out, maybe. You know. Yeah, I think it looks really handsome on him. So, but if we go out and he can put it on, like I'm okay with that. Did you cry when you saw her in the dress? Julie didn't think I cried, but I, I wasn't like, <laughs> I wasn't bawling my eyes out. I was very teary-eyed. Not only when you come down the aisle, but throughout, I mean, throughout the whole night, but especially throughout the, the ceremony at the church. Yeah, Dave's not, like, one to be, like, a full-blown crier. I just think, you know how we see so many Instagram reels or all these, like, TikToks of guys, like, bawling their eyes out? I don't know, part of me was like, oh, is he going to just, like, lose it? <laughs> he did. It was emotional. I'm not going to lose it. <laughs> did everything go correctly as planned, or were there some adjustments made? No, it was definitely like the most stressful week of my life leading up to the wedding. We got married on a Friday. But looking back, like, there were just like so minor things that really didn't mean anything because the wedding turned out perfectly. But for example. Yeah, so there was like a noise ordinance. So the venue was not allowed to have any speakers outside. And we had planned to have some light music. What the fuck? I'll still put speakers outside. I don't give a fuck, man. That was my wedding, dude. Cocktail or dinners <clears throat> and speeches were going to be made during the dinner. But it actually worked out really well that the speeches were made as people entered to like the dance floor in the DJ area. People were all like standing and super attentive to the speeches instead of eating. Yeah, so, I thought it was way better. It was actually for the better. Yeah. Does the sex stop now? Like, obviously. <laughs> you're telling me you're not getting title one bitch over the six years. I don't know. Maybe niggas built different, man. I like a married. We're not, we're not hooking up anymore. We didn't hook up before it. We didn't hook up before what? <laughs> Hey, that's not good, boys. Don't listen to them. No sex before marriage, my guy. You know what I'm saying? You only have it after you get married. This is not true. Hell no. Now, we're, you know, we're pretty active. We've always been pretty active, and uh, that's that's not going to change, you know, man. Like, that's not, no, that's not the life that either of us want. Heaven. Not all that's changed. <laughs> when are we going to see the first beastie baby? So... I'll let you, I know Julia has an answer to this, I'm sure. 
Do you, all girls have this timeline in their head, right? Well, it's not a timeline, like, they, like biologically. No, no, I know. But girls have a timeline that's a bit more aggressive than the biologics of the situation, <laughs> than the reality of the situation. But Julia has, uh, she's been great about, I don't want to say being flexible, but like obviously as our life's developed, we haven't been at the point yet to where that would make sense. And so it's not something that, that we're going to like force. Yeah, I think I really want to be settled and obviously like, internationally. Wait, we're, we don't move every three months. We're settled. <laughs> we're not settled. So uh, I, I turned 30 uh, in July. Wow, that's so old. God damn. 30 years old, that bitch old, my guy. I thought you should, you should have a 21 year old, my guy. Yeah. I turned 30 in July and I want to have a big party and celebrate with friends. So obviously I want to be able to drink. So maybe after that we can, you know, talk about it, but definitely not time soon. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Obviously, I wanted to let y'all in on this you know, very special moment in my life, in, in our lives. Yes, sir. So, yeah, thanks for following the journey. In the next video, we got a bit of an update for you on a... I'm not going to lie, man. The nature in Spain looks amazing, dude. Just look at the background. New situation here in Marbella. You can kind of get a little hit by, by where I'm standing right now. If you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you, bro. All right, boys, that's all I have for today, man. Um, <clears throat> I really hope you did enjoy it, bro. If you if you did enjoy it, be sure you leave a like and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and hit subscribers right now, boys. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video. I love you all, baby. Peace.